Hey, Retcon Raider here, and welcome back to Wildermyth, Monarchs Under the Mountain. As today, we, uh, we actually take a slight step back. It turns out it's a good thing that I set that emergency save right before we grabbed Storm Powers, but just not for the reason that I originally did that. Um, it turns out the power does work with Ambush, so that's great. But it turns out it is not compatible with Nolan's personal quest. Uh, it turns out, to go on that quest, you have to have two good arms. And by turning one of his arms into lightning, he no longer qualified, but the quest didn't go away. It basically just broke the quest. So, um, you know, here we are. I figured we'd just do a quick little retcon. And we are now technically going on for a friend before we gain storm powers. Same end results, just a uh, slightly different approach. For a friend. One misty winter night. Two friends walked these woods. Gernt. On a poorly planned patrol. Times like this, I'm actually glad I've got company. Even if this whole thing's, well... Whole thing's what? A wayless walk, read, and mysteries miasma? Yeah, I don't know. We took a wrong path somewhere. Did you just hear frogs? Gribble, gribble. Hmm. Snag. Frogs. Don't hear frogs. There's an owl won't stop hooting, and something that could be... Bump. Excuse me. Could be monsters, but... Hmm. Also, snag. Oh, that's not far. Good. I guess Random will just cool his heels for a few days. There's no light, no sense of up or down. In the trapped air, every sound and sense... Feels close. Where am I? Am I blind? Um, am I alone? Nolan? Oh, thank all gods, you're awake. A flame flares. Aaron carefully sets down a small copper lamp. The shock of the light is its own kind of blindness. As Nolan's eyes adjust, he sees the prison that surrounds them. Earthen walls, crude bars of barely shorn boughs. What happened? I remember being in the woods and then a... Uh... Cultists, rock scratchers, bull worshippers. Left us with this lamp and a little oil. I guess they plan to let us waste away. Not sure what else. They're mocking us, and we're going to kill them for it, leaving us light to starve by. Yeah. Well, the bars are wood, so... Tried it. You tried the... I've never seen wood like this. Only explanation is, uh, enchantment? Old abiding magic of some kind. My spear has no effect. The lamp flame won't burn it. And I guess these earth walls? That's all I can think of is to dig. But without food, doubt we'll get anywhere. Hmm. Yeah, uh, but our captors, do they come by? Have they? At least once while I was awake. I slept some. Don't know how long. Oh. That's all right. What's all right? Well, and it's... All right, well, the main thing to do is probably to take stock and make a plan. And there's nothing to eat? Nah. Though the situation must be fluid. Seems like we won't be fed. Fine, okay. Uh, 
any other prisoners, or just us. No one else, unless you want to count this ancient abomination. It's nestled there like a body of a brass pill bug, joints crusted with dry earth. A device of the old mortificers, mostly intact, but clearly lacking the spark of animation. Don't worry, though. Just some old broken bonomaton. Long time since it's been working. But this is... This is not nothing. Look at its hands. Did they plant this here? It looks like it hasn't moved in forever. I'm getting a scary plan. Minutes bleed to hours, coagulate into unguessable chunks. Nights, days, dreary, hungry. Nolan measures and studies the lifeless Morthagi, certain it's useful, but not sure why or how. Aaron scars his moods on the blank, hard earth walls. Eventually, he comes to a conclusion. Fairly simple, but... You want to talk? Think I have something. Yeah. Well, my idea is not advanced, but it might work. So here it is. We play dead. Very convincingly. They have to check on us, right? So when they come in to examine our corpses, we jump them. I could almost see it working, yeah. As long as they care to remove us in a timely fashion. Which... I don't know. Here's what I'm thinking. Look at this thing's shovel hands. If we can repair it, we have tools to dig us out. Forces them to either intervene or let us go. Repairing it, the more I think on it, shouldn't be much harder than replacing where the old sinew in it's rotted away and feeding blood into its system. What? I'm suggesting you cut off my left arm, then we use the tissues to get this sold creature working. Then it digs us out. And given that this is our second time through this event, and we know we're getting our arm back right afterwards, yeah, we'll go with the option I almost never choose. Aaron amputates Nolan's arm, and they use the materials to fix the Morthagi digger. Nolan, I wish I could bring myself to volunteer in your place. I... I mean, look, you don't have to do this. My idea could work. It could. Not saying it couldn't. But to me, this is a sure bet. Taking our lives into our own hands rather than hoping those deepest feel the urge to clean up bodies before they go to bones. I'm not worried about it. The pain, the loss... Whether folks look at me the same, doesn't matter. Aged brass and bone, dully gleam. If you want, we could pick randomly. I'd be willing to, uh, well... Nah, just be quick, okay? The operation is swift. Aaron grits his teeth and does the job. Wasting no breath on worthless words, Nolan's blood pools darkly on the earth. Nolan keeps quiet as he can. The lamp sings one soft, shimmering note. Rumble. Rumble, rumble. Crick, crunkle. Groosh. <laughs> Nolan, I'm going to kill this thing. You there? <laughs> Pla. Mm, uh. <laughs> I think we're through. Hard to tell, though. I feel at once glad and... <laughs> and like I left something behind. Clink, we're... Master, tunnel complete. What now for these tortured bones? Click. 
This thing gives me an odd feeling. A sad feeling. There's something more to it, isn't there? But it's already served us once. Sometimes all the monster needs is a chance. I agree, though I can't say I find the concept comforting. We may come to regret it, I guess. But can't leave it behind to get repurposed by those bullhuggers. They embark for home, then make it back without further incident. Come along, and just don't be evil. Click, slip, v Oh, these tortured bones. Poor guy. Bree? Urkelbitz joins the party. Nolan has taken on a companion, which will help in any battles he takes part in. Neat. I've actually almost never had Urkelbitz in the party because I could never bring myself to lop off limbs just for a, a temporary companion. As for our quote-unquote free level up, you know, the one that just cost us a limb, uh, this is actually pretty simple. I mean, Vicious is melee-based, and we're not going to have any melee attacks once we go full lightning. And uh, Ember Arrow can't be used without bows, which we can't use if we go full lightning. So that really just leaves inspiration. We could re-roll, hope for better options, but we just don't have the points to spare. Oh, right. The other downside here is that because we had to burn extra time doing this, we're now just a month out from another incursion. But if we hurry, we should be able to hit that last tile and clear it, which will stop the incursion in its tracks. Except Nolan has to go back to Gladville to recover from his ordeal. Right. So, you know what? Let's go ahead and get a third... Yeah, let's get third tier defenses up. Hey, he's back. We'll have him beeline for the Stormwell. I mean, in theory, we should be able to hit the final tile before the incursion does too much damage. Oh, yeah, 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 we're fine. We're fine. While it's chewing on the defenses in that tile, we can just clear the final tile. End the chapter. And this... Oh my goodness. That's four deepest upgrades. We'll definitely block the healers. And we'll block the extra armor on Horn Children. But I think we'll just have to live with those other two. Actually, you know what? No, let's block the extra damage on the Woken. That's That just makes them too dangerous right now. And we can afford it, so... All right, defense upgrade complete. Nolan is now at the Stormwell. And at this point, it should play out the same way it did last time. So let's skip ahead. We'll be right back. And we're back. Yep, the uh, event played out pretty much exactly the same. The only difference is that this time, we walked away with two upgrades instead of one. We got the Storm Arm, which we already saw last time. That one grants Jump Jolt. But we also picked up Storm Gaze, a passive ability that has a small chance to automatically inflict two unblockable damage to anyone who attacks him in melee. Obviously not something to build entire strategies around, but given that some of the most common foes we're running into right now are high defense, low health, it could come in handy. Okay, let's hit that final tile. Close out the chapter before that incursion does too much damage. Giant Pine Wild. The Drop of Rivari. 
To those who are about to die, we salute you. But you know, try not to die if you can help it. Enemy on the road. A narrow pass cuts the mountains here. It's on towards afternoon and the breezes sigh among the rocks, pushing gray swaths of mist around. Looks like we've got a task in front of us. It's not someone you know, is it? You know many of them? Huh? No, it's... I mean, it's not like I spent a long time there, learning people's names and stuff. I was just... Let's worry about the implications when we make it to the other side. Ah, man feeling pretty good about blocking that damage bonus on the Woken. This, uh, this actually looks pretty doable. Hey, Urkelbits, there you are. I got slightly concerned when I noticed he wasn't in our, our party lineup on the world map. But I guess they tweaked it so that tagalongs like this guy and uh, the sommelier that I think we got in one of the previous chapters only show up during battle, as opposed to outside of battle. Stats look pretty straightforward. Let's get in there. Oh, and let's get Nolan up front, too. Make full use of that new aura. And we are not off to a great start. Nice. One down. Hold on. Let's see if we can poison first. Nope. Alright, let's knife him. And guard. And ambush. Woken out. Aaron's untouchable. Second Woken is immobilized. Okay, so far so good. Let's drag the Chosen out of combat. Keep him pinned until we're ready to deal with him. Oh, wow. We might just go ahead and finish him off then. Though we should probably take care of the closer targets first. Woken 2. Out. Aaron's untouchable. There we go. Chosen's already dead. He just doesn't know it yet. Bleh. Beast of the pass. How are we doing? The Chosen. We slew one of the Chosen. From up the pass, a gentle thundering filters down. Grumble, crumble. They feel it in their feet, the shaking rocks, the pounding earth. That's not a good sound. Something splits the stones ahead and comes charging. Crash. Kreorg. A guttural call of a horn resounds. It's the Shadow Hunter. He's found me. Shadow Hunter. 
leaping and charging with stunning agility. It lows and shouts, hunting for living meat. And there's a real big boss. Nice. Woken three, out. No, not Urkel bits. His tired bones. Nolan moving up. Nice, nice. No, no, not, not Urkel bits. Get over here. Or you could just die. That works too. That's the Slingers. Aaron's untouchable, so... Now we're really just setting up for the Shadow Hunter. Nolan moving up. And there he is. We'll just form a battle line in this choke point and prep for contact. We need to refocus Bunny. Oh, that did not immobilize him the way I thought it would. Because he's unstoppable. Good to know. All right, let's start whittling. Oh my, we might be in trouble here. Random, it's all you, buddy. And there we go. A shield? Come on. I mean, that is a nice looking shield, but we have no use for it, so into the fire it goes. The way is cleared. They emerge from the mist on the other side of the range. Well, we're through. Though, a road can be a dangerous place in its own fashion. Especially an ill-used one. I don't believe it. We slew the Shadow Hunter. But... Fills you with something, doesn't it? Fire or pride. But night's coming on. Windmill up there might be our best option for a safe sleep. They all pick their way up to the windmill. Hopefully they'll find rest. The wind in the mountains rises and howls. Old Jasper Mill. That side will cool your blood down some. I'll check around the back. The windmill smells like sackcloth. It's cool, dusty, decaying. Slow twirling blades groan overhead as a splintered center shaft twists uselessly in the ceiling. Seems we're alone here. It's been a strange journey. 
I never expected to be anything more than... just another nobody from Lefefeld. So I threw my life away. You helped me get it back. I'll never forget that. We all do the best we can. The old Jasper Mill, I remember hearing of this place. Built a couple generations back, kept running all that time. Until recently, it looks like. Two or three years. People do the best they can. But the seasons are relentlessly changing. It's a tough life we've signed up for. But there are no easy paths. True enough. The road they've reclaimed will see new traffic soon. It will open the way for travelers, trade, and peace. But shadows collect in the places shadows do. By the rocks and the ruins. Deep under roots of mountains. And all that earned us 11 years of peace. Our young heroes enjoy some nice, quiet downtime until they're in their mid-thirties. During which time the enemies also weaken slightly, but, uh, not gonna lie, I was really hoping for more than that. I guess that's something, at least. During the years of peace... Random's grandfather, Renbarn, passed away. He died satisfied that his grandson had embarked on a sunnier path. The opened road brought many colorful folks through Lefefeld. Old Renburn would have loved to see it. Random noticed that the town hall at Doublebide had fallen into disrepair during all the conflict. So he passed a summer helping to rebuild it. Nolan was approached by an old acquaintance who told him, The offer still stands. With a hard stare, Nolan made it clear he was a different person now, and sent the woman on her way. Bunny spent a month tracking a golden stag. As she finally raised her weapon for the kill, the stag looked her straight in the eyes and laughed. Bunny went home with a prize greater than any set of antlers. Transformation. And there's the Thunder Stomp. I was really hoping for the other arm, but we'll take a leg. That grants him a swift action area stun, though the chance of it actually working is relatively low. But it will increase if we can get both legs transformed. Though again, I'm really hoping we get the other arm before we get the other leg. And upgrades. Time to shore up our gear, see if we can even the odds. Though unfortunately we really don't have a lot to work with here. Let's hit the pause button real quick, I'll run some numbers, and we will be right back. And we're back! Uh, sadly, as expected, we are very limited in what we can do. The big limiting factor is really spell threads, which are required for almost everything. But here's what we're going for. We're going to go ahead and bump Random up to some basic Tier 1 gear, since he was still running with Tier 0 starter stuff. And then because damage output has been one of our weak points, we'll dump a fair chunk of our remaining points into upgrading Aaron's Spear. It would be nice to upgrade armor or bunny staff, but those are all items that we can theoretically find as loot, so I'm not too worried about that. But, you know, we'll, uh, we'll try to stockpile resources a bit more effectively this time around. If we don't find things we can use, then we'll upgrade as needed at the end of Chapter 2. There's more like this the further we go. Only the crows are pleased, singing to the smell of burnt homes, burnt flesh. 
elsewhere in the woods. Here it is. Pretty secluded place. Fix this old cottage up himself. He's had the experience your child did. Went further, though, and Gladville's just the other side of that hill back there. The door swings open before Nolan can knock. Who's shouting out here? Is that... Nolan, how long has it been? It's almost a year since I left for Lefeffold. Feels like longer. The woodland cottage is small, but not cramped. Singed spices and the odor of old cooking oil tangle cozily in the air. This place is nicely tucked away. Who's this? Joa May. I'm from Lefefeld. Her husband and kids are with her cousin on a nearby farm. I brought her here to you because... It's those cultists again, isn't it? The ones I would have sworn to? They were meeting with my daughter. The kid's okay. Joa here had to move her whole family, though. The neighbor's girl put on one of their masks and went with them. And I knew it was nothing I could fight. It's quite a ways along the West Road through territory that's gone wild. But I think... That we should lend a hand? I don't know. I've heard it called the weight of well-meaning. When the act of helping one puts you into the hopes of all who need helping... Imagine me convincing you to think of everyone else. Can't save everyone. I understand. It's not your fight. Lefeffeld is far away, after all. We left it far behind. Joa opens the door and... Thump. I was only saying... Yeah. The door opens back up. Creek? Random, are you aware there's a... Oh. Hey, whose attractive mom was that? <laughs> really, Bunny? Oh. I'll go grab the old bow. But I'm not dying for a bunch of strangers somewhere. The shadows deepen. Okay, chapter two. We've got a big new area to explore to the southwest, and Lefefeld... We'll have to burn time to access these two tiles, Lefefeld and Lonesome Fields. That's annoying. We're also not too far out from another incursion. So we're going to have to be careful about how we approach this. We could beeline straight for Lefeffield. My normal go-to would be to pick up our fifth as fast as possible. But if we do that, we'll have an incursion coming into our... our partially secured territories before we're back out and about. So I think what we need to do is clear these two tiles, secure those, and create an extra buffer. Then, once we're sure we've dealt with that first incursion, we can access Lefefeld. Or we could have an immediate personal quest. Oh, actually... Shoot. That's another grim one with a pretty stark trade-off, but it could give us our fifth early. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Sorry, random. It's for a good cause. A mending path. Trekking the narrow winter roads of nowhere, a sudden illness clogs random's chest. 
shoots barbs through his veins, rouses him in the night to kneel heaving in the dark outside the tent. So far he's pushed through, hoping it would ebb. Instead, it's worsening. Ugh. Yes, you're being brave, Random, but enough's enough. Here, let's camp in this spot. Looks defensible. Bunny sets Random down, then goes off for firewood, enough to last the night and the following morning. Random sips from his canteen. Sunset's not yet close. And, odd enough, that's when a faith called Pilgrim comes down the road. You're bad off, aren't you, Earth Sun? You look it. Do you mind if I stoop down and listen to your signs? I'm Annie Belast. No one worth fearing. Pilgrim of an order that's never been popular. A god who'd never ask to be. Whoever you are, I... <sighs> the pilgrim bends down and places fingers on Random's pulse, holds a coin before his mouth, then an ear to his upper chest. Hmm. I've seen symptoms like these, certainly. Your eyes are still clear. That's good. How long have you... Three days. Just three. Who are you? You his friend? Well, that man's suffering from Igokura, rare disease. Folks get it in winter, a wayward spore. I can treat it, but to cure it is impossible. Or nearly, I suppose I should say. A while later. You're a good man. Annie's administered a small elixir made from water and wild barrow bell as well as some burnt, crushed mushrooms. He told Random to sleep, and he's been in the tent ever since. He'll need more of this elixir. The rest of his life he'll need it. Igokora leaves husks where happiness was. It's a brutal way to go. You mentioned a cure. And I shouldn't have. It's one of those convenient stories about a miraculous heal-all I... Once, long ago, I tried to find it. The journey cost my sister her life. By the time I'd returned empty-handed, the man it would have healed had already passed. Desperate hearts are reckless. Treat the disease patiently and he'll live longer. Talking about me? Oh, you're already looking better. Some constitution you must have. Feel a lot stronger, and I thank you. But, so tell me, tell us both about this cure. Random. Oh, Dale, my goddess, my god. He mumbles into the fire a moment. Is this the purpose my wandering feet follow? If it is, and it must be, I'll trust my feet, my will. Then meets their eyes again. Our paths brought us all here. Who am I to deny my place? They huddle close to the flames as the pilgrim, Annie Belast, reluctantly describes a distant place, a harrowing guardian, a legendary restorative. And in summary, since you seem set on seeking it out. Please, let me accompany you. It's clear to me that I was put in your path for this holy duty. You'll need the elixir regardless, and I can teach you to make it. We could opt out at this point and just not have the disease afflict random, but... That would also forgo the potential rewards, so... Again, sorry, Random. They sleep here that night, and set out the next day.
Oh, yes, we should probably stop Nolan from wandering into hostile territory by himself. I guess, uh, I guess we'll just have him stand by. It's on the way anyway. I've never met a holy pilgrim. Over the course of the journey, the disease hasn't left Random's body. But his health has returned, little by little, with the elixir Annie's brood. You're a pilgrim of the Wandering Church, aren't you? Probably have obligations, right? Big gatherings? Your cheeks look less sunken. Glad to see you eating more. They're nearing their destination, an ancient shrine to the sea, where the fabled restorative is said to be housed. I remember this forest. It's been all my life, and I haven't returned. So it's almost like she's alive again. My sister. Night knocks them off their knees. A short, salty dinner, a stiff drink, and a draught of medicine. Sleep. They wake up to Mill in the cold dawn, achy and oddly anxious. You asked me yesterday, Random, about being a pilgrim. Yeah, but if you don't... My sister and I, I told you we went after the cure together? Well, the man we were set on retrieving it for. He was our father. In failing, I lost them both. I was overcome with, you know, so many feelings. Guilt, mostly. That I'd led my sister, Quenoline. I led Quenoline to her death. And for nothing. In the end, it was for nothing. A great cosmic joke. They pack up their camp in quiet and set out again. My sister tended to fear the forest. Came along despite that. Anyway. Anyway, I dropped my heart in a well of hatred. I'll spare you those evil blank stories. But I met my pilgrim one day. Gildeth, she was called. One of Dale's wanderers. Dale, our god. Our goddess. Dale. Come, walk with me. That's all she said. That's all anyone needed to say. I was young still. I'd been torturing myself in the world. The unusually sinuous track that winds between the trees leads beneath a rocky overhang into the belly of a cliffside and down. Old Gilbeth taught me about Dale, her god. Not to force me to change, but to affix before me a, a kind of star. Dale is woman and man, thing and idea. All is in Dale, and Dale is in all. Thus, wandering amongst all is joy. Keeping a journal of your journeys is worship. All paths lead us where we must be. The whim and the will are no different. All I do is love, love where my feet carry me. I didn't believe it quickly, but gradually, the steps we took, seasons, then years. By the time we came back to my hometown, I wasn't angry anymore. Even at myself, sorrowful, bitter in moments but aware as I'd never been of all the love I'd been given, all the love I still had a chance to give back. And I... Stay back, Annie. Hmm? Oh, but that's... Quenoline? My sister, standing exactly as she... as she stood when it struck her. Why's... I mean, what's... Come take a look at this. 
He's strong right now. Stay by us. Hmm? Hmm. This may be our vaunted guardian. What's left of it, anyway? I remember the thing. Snaking. Moving. Alive. The terror of its forge fire eyes. Not moving now. We're lucky. Excuse me, Ellie. Scoot, scoot. Who killed it? This altar looks pristine. So that's the cure? Annie? What did you call this sickness I've contracted? Hmm? It's called Igokura. The word is Thanaric. It's... And this remedy? I don't know. The story's old. A restorative of some kind that could be used to heal any malady. It's hard to compare a legend to a hunk of glowing salt. The book I read described it as a gift from the sea, answered with treachery. A single crystallized miracle. Close to the crystal, unless they're imagining it, they hear the noise of playful waves and ribboning wind. And now the fateful decision. We can either have Random use the cure himself, in which case he'll go back to normal, or we can use the cure on Quenoline, Annie's sister, in which case we'll gain a fifth, and uh, Quenoline and Annie will have a happy ending. But Random's ending will be slightly less happy. He'll be stuck with the disease, which will reduce some of his stats and shorten his lifespan. But I mean, that's what we came here for. We need a fifth, and I feel like it's the good thing to do. Random will still have some decent adventures with us before his time comes. Random lifts the crystal off its altar. It threads his knuckles with spirals of light. What's it like? Do you feel anything? The light feels... damp. But someone else has first claim. Random? Where's he... The world needs people like you more than it needs... Well, anyway. I guess maybe it won't even do anything. Oh, no. Random. It, it won't work. Or I, I don't think it. We'll see. Random holds the crystal close to the stone woman. He forms and forces all the weight of his will into a single idea. A miracle, reversing whatever change wrought cold rock from once warm skin and muscle. Icy, radiant slivers drip from the crystal's core. Sound, to all of them, becomes warped and blue. Gloms and layers of light find invisible cracks and filter beneath the woman's stone flesh. The crystal in Random's hand shrinks to nearly nothing. Another glance finds it entirely dissolved. One last wave of crashing brilliance emerges them and drains away. A briny smelling mist clings to the air. Quenoline, are you? Annie? You're. No, you're too old. I'm much too old. But it's me. Just then, a hungry growl emerges from the shadows beyond the Gorgon remains. It's echoed by another unseen mouth. Sprowl. Something's woken up. We'll meet you at the mouth of the gully. Go on. Hmm? But I can... Come on, Quenoline. Not this time. That was pretty brave, Random. It wasn't anything. Now here they come. Gobbler. The unbelievable stink of rot oozes from its mouth. It moves with hideous agility, unnerving precision. 
And these are unique foes. Ones that I believe can only be encountered on this particular event. So I'm not entirely familiar with what they do. Let's try to take this one out quick. And down it goes. Aaron's untouchable. Let's have Bunny tag the other one. We'll try to immobilize it. Nice, nice. Oh, shoot. Okay. Well, I didn't realize it had a ranged attack. But, fortunately, Aaron was untouchable, so we're fine. Hey, level up for Aaron. Uh... Man, and again, I'm not really seeing anything here that immediately jumps out at me. As a general rule, I'm not really a fan of once-per-fight abilities. But I could get behind upgrading Untouchable. I don't normally do that. But I could theoretically see it coming in handy. We also pulled a Sash of Elimination. Plus Stunt. Which we'll toss to Nolan, even though he's not here. That'll bump his stun chance. And the story continues. Suppose they're the ones who killed our guardian. Maybe? Or just moved into the den of a dead old monster. Not that it matters much. Suppose it doesn't. See? Here they come. Nothing to worry about. You both alright? You. Your name is Random? You healed me? Anybody would have. Don't overglow. Best thing now is to get away from here. Talk as you walk. Yeah, sorry. They follow their own path out. Afternoon flares and begins to fail. Burrs and wild herbs scent the track. All I mean is, I felt forced to act. There was no real way to do anything different. No, thank you. Truly. Again, and a hundred times, and forever. And I'm sorry for what it cost you. The return is faster and more eager. Random and the girl, Quenoline, carry on a conversation. Awkward, but important to them both. This feels like as far as we'll go tonight. Your friend is a good man. Oh, yeah? Remember to be proud of him, even while you're sad. The Ego Cora, the sickness. We'll take him, in time. But the life he's brought back, that matters to him. Be kind about it. Be kind to them both. I must humbly ask you. Neither deserve their fates. But their paths crossed. By the time stars appear, Bunny and Annie have a fire blazing. A stew of wild onions and mushrooms to fill them all. I've thought about this. Random? Bunny? I want to join your band. You mean the Retcon Raiders? That's right. The sky deepens. A moonless sea of stars crossed by fast clouds. I'll say right now, I'm pretty shaken. Like, I don't know how I'll ever close my eyes again. Maybe that's why I want to be like you. Stronger. Please, 
if you'll have me. Dad would be proud, Quenoline, and I'll always be, whatever path you take. It's not an easy life, or a safe one, but if you feel resolved on pursuing it, it really won't matter if we deny you. Further talk decides it. Young Quenoline's going to be a hero in the spirit of the man who rescued her, risking all. Annie the Pilgrim will set aside his wanderings to live close to his sister for whatever time he has left. Dinner's long done by the time the siblings go to talk in the tent. Random and Bunny remain out, listening to crickets and the wind. How's your... Uh, breathing gets weird. Things feel kind of frail. Maybe just worn out. A single owl muses out loud, then falls silent. Tired old voices left alone in the night. Embers redden to black. It's not fair, Random. Out of nowhere. Glad I found this side of myself. That's what I'm feeling, more than being sad. We'll keep looking for a cure. We might find it. Every night from then on, Random would drink an elixir to ease the pain and slow the illness. He'd brew it more and more potent, even as it became less and less effective. Still, he'd never regret his choice. Inside the tent. I really just can't believe I'm talking to you right now. Worry if I close my eyes, I'll wake up and... Bet you sleep before me. Your voice. How'd I get so old? It's... I'm... No, please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Quenoline. I want to ask you now. Following a path beside random. When you were a kid, it was always stick swords and dragon battles. But as Dad said, we inherited our mom's eyes and his deft hands. Always felt you could be anything. You know what I'm hoping? Oh, we have to choose her class now. Um, well, crud, I was really hoping to get a gander at her stats first before I decided who she was going to be. Yeah, she's not on our roster just yet. All right, well, let's hit the pause button real quick. Find someone suitable for this particular role. We'll be right back. And we're back. I'll take mastery over the maladies and monsters. Maybe even the miracles. Smart. I hear it's the mystics who get all the guys. Really? That's the line you wanted to go out on, Annie? Alright, so Random gets plus 10 retirement age, which unfortunately is more than offset by Igokora. But he also pulls a level up. Which I'm thinking we will sink into... Man, you know, I really didn't want to make him a range-based character, but it is hard to pass up on archery. And we're definitely not taking inspiration, because we already took that on Nolan. Hold on, let's uh, let's check the actual effects of Igokora. Oof, that's worse than I remembered. That hit to health and recovery does make him a bit more fragile, so... Maybe we should lean back towards ranged. Then again, Long Reach could let him continue being a melee character from a safer distance. 
Yeah, yeah, let's go for it. We can always refine it in his next life, as need be. Man, we are running long here, but, uh, but before we wrap up, let's get to know our newest recruit. Quenelene Belast, the decisive coward. That's an interesting combination. Though for her new life as a retcon raider, she will adopt a new name. Yvrath. I think her appearance is fine as is, but I might tweak it a bit off screen. And history. Yvrath never knew her mother, who left when she and her brother were still young. Her doting father meant the world to her and saw a world of potential in the girl's eyes. One year, an awful illness, Igokora, infected Yvrath's father. She and her brother set off to obtain a mystical cure, but met with disaster. Yvrath was turned to stone and her brother barely escaped alive. Many years later, her brother returned beside a hero named Random, who'd contracted the same disease and sought the same cure. But Random used the miracle remedy to return Yvrath to flesh, and so accepted that the Igakora would someday claim him. Yvrath would always feel the weight of that, and know her life belonged to both of them. Welcome aboard, Yvrath. It's a pleasure to have you here. And she's got potential, loyal, and gritty. Which I guess makes sense, given her backstory. Yeah, she's one of the special recruits, so... Her backstory is unique to this particular event. I believe it also uh, presets her hooks, so there's no randomization there. Though, I mean, technically we could, I believe, go back through and re-edit a lot of that stuff. I just, uh, I feel like that does a disservice to the story, you know? I try to keep the special recruits like that relatively intact, even as I customize them to allow raiders to tag into the story. That's it. We have definitely run too long today, but <laughs> that's fine. You know, I do love playing this game, so I'm not going to complain. And I'm still ahead of my schedule, so it's not the end of the world. We'll hit the pause button for now. I'll uh, maybe make a few more tweaks to Yvrath. And uh, we will pick up here next time, as we continue with the plan previously laid out. We have to knock out those two uh, closer wild tiles, get defenses up on Drop of Rivari, and carve a path to Lefefeld which will actually get us our sixth, so I guess we'll be starting the B-Squad a bit early. Or, you know, priming a potential replacement for Random when he inevitably retires. I'm really hoping he makes it through Chapter 3, but we'll, we'll see. Anyway, uh, see you then. Oh, and special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. Including, but not limited to, Dragon Matrix 7, Matthew Smith, Revenant, Aloise, Dracket, Theory V23, Egon Alter, Emil, Excelsior, Goatleib, James Treme, Kazorm, Mark Dienza, Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Verum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Thomas Pietkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the PayPal, the Patreon, the Nexus GG, or the YouTube memberships. Links are in the description.